Welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The exception mean of Angel is Messenger and the exception mean of Destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I'll introduce you to my wonderful guest, Susan Peters. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date as it really does mean a lot to Susan and I to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, find your purpose, create your future to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on the next steps and take charge of your destiny so that you can fill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Susan Peters, about why she married her heart. Now, Susan is the author of the newly released best-selling book, The Miracle of Marrying My Heart, a journey of discovering new dreams after loss and creator of the Heart to Heart Connection Summit. After the unexpected and devastating loss of her beloved husband, John, Susan began a transformational journey of her heart to move her th through her grief. She discovered how creating new dreams helped bring her heart back into wholeness and authentic connection, allowing her to embrace the fullness of life. She hopes to inspire others to reconnect with their hearts after times of loss so that they can le learn how to dream and find the magic in their lives once again. She's in love with the life she has chosen and truly believes that connecting to our hearts will make a difference in the world. So without further delay, hello, Susan, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, Ray. Uh, thank you so much for having me. And I'm really glad to be here today joining you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Susan and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy and do say hello. So Susan, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how the question, what dreams do you have, can allow us to be free to step forward in new ways? Yes, um, I started off thinking I had all my dreams. I, I was married to a wonderful man. I had three kids. We had a house and a life that was growing great. We were heading toward retirement and ready to enjoy life in a whole new way. And on the day of our son's wedding, my husband started feeling sick uh, a couple hours before the wedding. Uh, he had a pain in his stomach and ended up on the bathroom floor and we ended up calling an ambulance and he never made it to the wedding. He ended up being in the hospital for four and a half months because his pancreas had burst and he never came home. And so all of a sudden, just like that, all my dreams were gone, I thought, and life just changed in an instant. And so for a while, I just kind of sat in the space of, well, you know, I lived my dreams. I'm grateful for them, but I really don't have any more. And I just kind of have to survive this life until I die like he did, you know, and it was, it was challenging. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can imagine uh, my mom, uh, um, you know, lost, lost my dad when I was uh, about 20. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, she, she kind of like just had to get, you know, got, got on with her life and that, you know, she, she's, she's got a happy life and, and everything, but at the time it was, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it was the hardest challenge I've ever had to go through. And, and the thing that I never realized is I had to re-identify who I was because I kind of lost my whole identity with him. And now I was just by myself and had to figure out well, what's my purpose? Who am I? And so I joined a bunch of different groups online, um, grief groups and regular groups, and just kind of was trying to learn and, and, and see what I could find out about myself. And in one of those groups, I happened to be asked, what dreams do you have? And I, I literally sat there frozen and I couldn't think of one. I couldn't make one up. I, I really went blank. 
And, and it really bothered me. So I sat with it for three days um, until I received an email back from the same person saying, well, what can you do right now to make your dreams happen? And then all of a sudden I started realizing it had to come from my heart. I felt like my heart was broken. I felt like my heart was shattered and, and like it, it couldn't be whole again. But all of a sudden when I realized that I could I could love myself a hundred percent and trust myself a hundred percent. And if I do that, then maybe things could change it for me. And as soon as I thought that I was like, I could marry my heart. And I, I thought about it and I was like, I got all excited. And so I said, I'll buy myself a ring. So I literally started looking up rings online and I, and I found a really pretty heart ring and, and I said, I'm going to go and get it and purchase it. And so I went to the store, I, I purchased it. And the lady asked me if I wanted to put it on. But I was like, no, I, I, it's, it's special. I want to do something special and create a ceremony or something. I wasn't sure. I took it home and I sat on it for about a week. And then all of a sudden, um, one night, it was. I looked out the window and it was snowing. And the snow had just blanketed the ground. And I was like, this is the night. So I really said, I'm going to go get my ring. And I got my little singing bowl and I took off my socks and I'm like, I'm going to go stand in the snow and the grass. It was 30 degrees, oh. but I'm like, I want a natural part of my body to be touching the, the earth. I, I just felt like that was important. And I wanted to be outside because I felt like that's where I was more seen, you know, and, and I, I could be part of the whole universe. So I stood there in the snow and my grass and and I played my little singing bowl, which I had put my ring inside there. And all of a sudden, my feet got really warm at the bottom. A wind, which it was not windy outside, but all of a sudden, a little wind stirred up around my feet, came up around my whole body and whooshed the hair off my, my head or off my face. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, I, I felt so seen and loved more than I ever had before in my whole life, like the whole universe and, and my husband, John, my late husband, my parents, my ancestors, my God, everything was part of that moment. And, and so I got the ring and put it on my finger and I said, I'm going to commit to loving myself a hundred percent and trusting myself a hundred percent. And I did a little happy dance. I ran through the snow with my bare feet and I just, I felt so alive and so happy. And I was like, wow, what a beautiful feeling after going through so much loss and, and, and sadness. Um, so I was so excited that I decided to also create a heart honeymoon for myself. And I, I found a place to go that was about four hours from my house and it was going to be a longer river and this little town from like the 1800s. And I was like, I, I just need to do this. I've never gone on a, on a trip by myself. I've always gone with my husband. And, um, so I, I planned it and set it and I, I went out to go drive there and, what was interesting is as I was driving, I was getting really nervous. Like, should I really be doing this? All these fears started coming at me. I, I you know, maybe I'm making, ma making a mistake. I don't even know where I'm going. I don't know anybody, you know, there. And what if I have a flat tire? You know, all these things were going through my mind. But I came up to the toll booth where I um, was getting onto the highway. And, and where I am, we have a toll booth that still has an arm and a red light and a green light. And so... I was funneling into this toll booth, getting nervous, but I finally said, you know what? I'm going to be leaving my past life behind me. I need to say goodbye in a gentle way, and I need to move through this gate. And once I do, I'm on to my new life. This is going to be part of my new me. And so I waited, and the light turned green, and the gate opened, and I went through it. And once I went through and realized everything was behind me, I had this such a sense of freedom and new life. I, I put my windows down in my car and I let the air come in and I just felt so joyful and so alive. And I said, okay, here we go. So I went on my, I went and got to the, my destination and it ended up being such a beautiful journey because when I got there, I was still nervous in the sense of, I still didn't know anybody, but I decided to, decided to start sharing my story. And the very first person that I met, um, she was in the, I was going for lunch and she was the waitress. And I said, I just drove four hours to be here because I just married my heart and I'm on a heart honeymoon. And I told her my whole story about losing my husband, John. 
And she puts her hands on my shoulders and she's like, oh, I lost my husband when I was in my 20s and I had three young children and my parents had to help me raise my kids. And she says, oh my gosh. And my mom just died a little while ago. She had cancer, but she made friends with another lady a few states away online because they both had the same cancer. And she said, now I'm friends with that person and I've never met her in person. And she says, because you just came here and you're inspiring me that I should go take a trip and see her and meet her in person. Oh, wow. So I was like, oh my gosh. So, so losing my heart and marrying my heart all of a sudden sparked a new dream for somebody else. And so then that gave me courage to start sharing my story with other people in the town that I met. And I met another lady who had lost her husband when her kids were teenagers. I met other people that had their own stories of loss. And then I also had people that were just super supportive of my journey. And they, they were like, oh, wow, you're here. You should go into this. There's this really nice nature preserve. And, and, and there's some birds coming into town and they're migrating. And, and for me, that was like, oh, my gosh, it was kind of like my journey. Like I'm migrating also, I'm, I'm changing my life and going to a new place. And it was, it was springtime and the flowers were all blooming. And I was like, wow, what a way to start my new life. Because I said yes to the dream to marry my heart. And, and so it, it the whole trip, I, I could feel my husband's presence because he loved nature. And, and just to be out in nature, and it was along a river. And that just, it, it was so full of life because there was so many animals and birds, you know, coming in and out as I was journeying through and, and just the, the sound and the rush of the river, the smells of the area of the, the, the moistness and the dampness as, as well as the sun shining and the sunset. And all of these things were, were becoming a part of me now. And, and my heart and my heart was like just overjoyed that I actually could step into a dream and that it not only became possible, but it also became, helped me become so much more alive. And to see that life wasn't over, that there were so many things still left to live for and, and to, to just be grateful for and thankful for, and then more things that I could share with the world. Yeah, that's just so amazing, you know, that everything just as soon as you get on to that, um, that connection with your heart and connecting with the universe and, and everything, everything just sort of like flows and the synchronicities um, start come, coming forward when you start taking those those steps to, um, towards your dreams. I mean, did you sort of like have a spiritual background or anything like that be before this happened? Yes, I did. Um, it was, but it was definitely a lot more narrow. It was just a lot more focused on my, my religious background. And um, I mean, John even was an organist at a church. And, and so we were, were very much into, into our faith and, and we were always trusting in God to do the right things. And, and, and really in a lot of ways it got me through the nightmare of what we went through, but it also left me with so many questions. Like how does a God that, that, creates all these wonderful, beautiful things also allows so much suffering and, and the pains of death and, 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 and not help us seemingly through those things, you know, and, and then I started realizing that it was because everything is just so much more bigger than, than that. It's just, there, there's so many more reasons why we go through things. And, and I'm at this point, I have become grateful. Actually, I even thank my husband, John, that he was able to go through what he did and allow me this chance now to, to live in a new way. And uh, it, it, it opened me to the possibilities that, that, that God is everywhere, like in, in all the things in so many more ways than I ever realized. And that the universe is there to support us, that nature is there to support us, that birds and animals are part of our whole, our whole life. They, they guide us and help us and, and then we have the angels and guides that also do the same thing. And, and so I learned that I'm never alone. You know, as much as I had a fear of being alone after my husband died, I started finding out more and more and more how alone I was not. <laughs> 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 and my heart just became fuller and fuller and fuller because they, I just felt so embraced by all of the divine that was within me, around me, and other people. And it, it just made all the difference. 
yeah that's absolutely that's absolutely amazing that you've sort of like come to that uh that that conclusion and ev and everything worked that and i also like the fact that when you were sharing your story and, and this is what i love about when people connect with their with who they truly are their heart it starts that ripple effect that goes out to to inspire other people to go and you know share share their heart their story their experiences their whatever gifts talents they've got and that then encourages someone else to um to 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 go and so I love that that all sort of like started from you and you know you, you were able to help those those people you met you know go on and, and do and do whatever they wanted to do so I'm guessing it also helped you create a network community around you by connecting to all these different people yeah what it did was because I was interacting with total strangers and like almost immediately just by me sharing in my vulnerable state who I was and what I was going through it allowed them to be free to share their vulnerability without us even knowing each other and immediately I could feel a shift in both of us as we did that and we up leveled ourselves and into a into a, a better space you know a higher realm or whatever in that moment and and I started realizing how important those connections were and and I and so originally when I married my heart, I was kind of going to keep it a private moment. It's just for me, I'm, you know, I'm going on a honeymoon, da, 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 da. But then when I started realizing that sharing was making such a big difference and impacting these lives that I didn't even know, I was like, wow, I need to share this with more people. And, and it, it, it will not only help me, it will help all of us to up level. You know, we, we will all, we can all be free of the things that are, are causing us pain and causing us sorrow and grief and we can move into a higher level of love which is what we're meant to be living in that's what that's what god is that's what the universe is is love right and yeah. and so what ended up happening is i started writing these blogs on a facebook post i had created called heart to soul links and then i met somebody who was um a publisher and because i started interacting with her she said she offered a program that could write a book in a year. And I was like, I do have a really good story that I can have to write about marrying my heart, about losing John. And I think I can do it in a year. I've never written a book. I've never done this, but it could be, it, it could be a possibility to reach out to more people and share my story on, on a, on a wider scale. And, um, and so I decided to do it. I decided to write a book, um, about marrying my heart and, um, I'm calling it a journey. I called it a journey to new dreams after loss. And it actually just got published uh, last week. And I'm, I'm so excited. It turned into a bestseller with the, all the beautiful people who have been already part of my story and journey, who have been reading it and, and, and connecting with it because we all go through loss in our life. It doesn't have to be a spouse loss or a person loss. Even, you know, we, we lose our jobs, we lose our houses, we lose, our identities in different ways. Um, we, we lose even just what we want to do in life and trying to figure out what's next. And, and so those losses have possibility to, to lead us to new dreams because we, we are letting go of one thing and then opening up to another thing and uh, allowing something new to come into our lives. And it's very transformative. I did not realize how much I would transform in the process of actually writing my book uh, the way I did it with my publisher. Um, she helped me to see that it was a journey. It wasn't just about me. It was about all of us journeying together and that when we journey through loss and support each other, then we can grow and be stronger and have more love and have more life and um, be then we're able to create new things because it opens us up to our creative path. And all of the people that I have been working with on my journey, um, mo a lot of them are a part of my book. I, I have included what they have done to help me to see how important the journey is, how important it is to support one another, and how important it is to step into creativity because we all have different gifts that we can share and offer and, um, and, I realized that that my brokenness opened like the light to come in and to me in a new way and shine up something for me like a shiny new path in front of me that I had a choice whether I could step on it or not. But I was able to see that 
by taking one step after the other, after the other on it, the path, like you said, was opening up. And um, I started meeting more and more people and connecting in more and more ways. And it really expanded me so much more, but it also expanded all of us as a, as individuals and all of us in, in groups too, because we were nurturing and nourishing each other from a different space instead of a space of sadness, anger, grief, frustration, confusion. We all started walking in a more path of love and connectedness. And I found that that was so helpful in so many ways to all of us. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that is absolutely amazing. So how sort of like, you know, because obviously you started writing those blogs, how easy was it for you to actually share your story? Obviously, because you've got family around you, you've got the children, you know, how did that, how did that balance, balance out? Well, um, I mean, like you said, we're all on different journeys. So they were all very supportive of me and what I was doing. They, they haven't all read it yet. So I, I will be really curious to see how my kids like what my story says. Um, it, it, it is interesting, though, because, I mean, they lived through it. So it, it's going to be, I, I'm sure it'll be an emotional journey for each of them in a different way, uh, because um, it's not easy, you know, death and life. Are, are some big, pretty big topics. <laughs> and um, and uh, I will be really interested, though, to connect and see how it's affecting everybody, like even John's brothers and family, my brothers, and, you know, and, and along with my, my kids, and see, see what their thoughts are as we journey forward, because the journey continues. The journey's not over yet. It's uh, a person that's in your life is there forever. They're a part of your heart and they don't just disappear, you know. And um, but I'm really hoping that by doing this, it not only helps our family to to grow stronger, that it, it will help other people to see that they can grow stronger, too. Yeah. And, and I and I think that is so, so um, important. Again, you know, sort of like helping each other, um, you know, holding that space and being supportive. Of, of each other as 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 we go along and and just you're right everyone deals with grief and loss whether that is a family member or a pet or a job or or the life you know that they 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 had we all really do um deal with it in 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 different in different ways and we don't all need to marry our heart to actually get to to get through it there are lots of different ways um we we can do that so, you know, if someone has sort of like had, had a loss, you know, a, a partner, a family member, a, a job, uh, you know, whatever, whatever, it, whatever it is, and they're in that point where, okay, they're in that, 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 grief, that grief period, but they're kind of like thinking, okay, I really, you, you know, you get to the, you get to that point where you, that, that little thing comes in where you, you can either stay in the grief or you can actually just, just take, just take that, you know, take that little step. How would you, you, you know, you know, with the people, obviously with the experience you've had talking to the people that have experienced all these different losses, what would you say would be one of the best things that they could, they could start to do? Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, the biggest thing for me was just taking any step forward, whether it was a tiny baby step or a bigger step. It, every step made a difference for me because it gave me that little bit of confidence I needed to go forward um, and letting go of fears because I, I was very afraid of a lot of things in the beginning. And um, there were so many times I was like, no, I, I don't want to do it. I don't. Um, and, and that was hard. But thankfully, um, because of the people that I was supported by they they wouldn't kept encouraging me try this do that don't be scared you can do it and and so every step i took made a big difference and i i was able to overcome you know one fear after the other fear after the other fear they always keep showing up they never not mm. don't but <laughs> but it just makes you braver and more courageous for the next step and um and, and so i think you know those are the two most important things is finding people to support you and and it could it could be anybody. It doesn't necessarily have to be just a grief group. This, a lot of the groups I belong to were groups that helped 
me, you know, with my health and my body um, to do self care and, and take care of me so that I could, you know, function better. And then the other parts were, were groups that helped me to step forward, like reinventing myself and helping to see who, who, what, you know, how I could live out my purpose in new ways. And other things were other places were helping me to be more creative, you know, with who I was. Any ways that you can find support, um, even breath work and, and, you know, meditations and things like that, that help you to get to a different place inside of yourself. You need to find ways to find into your heart. You have to let go of what's in your mind because <laughs> when you're thinking and thinking and thinking, it, it makes you either sad or it makes you think you can't do it or it makes you, you know, get stuck in, in, in too many ways because you're overthinking. Uh, or you feel blank and you can't think at all. Wonder, you know. It, it, but when you go to your heart, your heart is so full of truth, you know. And, and I, that's why the one thing I found about marrying my heart is that always, always, if I go to my heart, I find the truth and I find what gives me life. And then I can follow what I need to do, even if I'm scared, even if it's hard. I can still go from my heart and move forward. And I think that's the, you know, those are the two most important things. Yeah, beautiful. And you, you know, how would you suggest that someone actually goes in and connects with 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 their heart? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be different for everybody, I think, because we all have. It's like any relationship with each other. You know, we we all do things in different ways and and connect in different ways. Um, but I I have found that uh, just taking time to be alone. You need that silence, especially out in nature. Nature helps me a lot because it gets my mind in a different zone. It helps me realize how small I really am. I sometimes think I'm, you know, big, but I'm not in nature. You know, you're a lot smaller, but yet you're held. You're held by mother earth. You're held by the trees and the sky and, and the animals and the birds that are flying around. You're noticed. And, and I, that's why I love going out in nature because I feel like I'm noticed and cared about. And, and, and I think because of that, it reflects back at me. I also really, really love the moon. And when I go outside and I, and I see the moon, I, I really like to go outside like actually every morning and see the sun coming up and say good morning to the sun. And, and then at night, I like to go out and whether the moon's there or not, that I, if I can see it or not, I know it's there. And, and just that interaction of, of taking that time to really know that I'm seen and heard and I can share whatever I need to. And then it comes back into my heart. It's it's almost like it gives me permission to go deeper inside of who I am when I let it happen. Yeah, no, that's that is absolutely um, be uh, be beautiful, you know, on, on how on how to do that. So how did it feel when you actually got the book published? <laughs> it was an amazing feeling because it, it's like, well, like my, my publisher from Flower of Life Press, she says, it's like, um, it's like a birth. You're, you're going, you're, you're in labor, like b making this book, you know, and, and it's a lot of work. It takes time and energy and, and it's a lot of emotion too. Um, and so when we got the closer it was getting, it was like the labor was getting a little bit more intense, you know, and, and then you're also, you're in that waiting zone of, of, you know, you, want to see how it's going to affect other people and, and be part of the world. And, and so when it's finally released and it gets the chance to be out in the world, it's like, wow, you know, I, I actually created this, this creation that can come into the world and, and be part of other people's lives. And I can share my joy with them and I can share my grief with them and I can share my, my marrying of my heart with them and, and the whole story. And, and and see how they respond and it, it's going to be interesting since it just came out last week so i i you know i i'm i'm just so excited to see what what it brings into the world but but actually being able to hold my book and and realize it's real you know that's that's a whole nother thing because i think sometimes when we live our stories they they after a while seem not real even though we know we live through them but actually being able to write it out and and being able to hold it in my hands is like, okay, it was real. I, I lived through it and now I've actually moved through it and I've actually created something beautiful from it. It's it's almost like, I, I like when my husband died, it, it's almost like he became the compost for my soil. 
and I kind of died too. And the old me is not here anymore. And because of both of us being composted together, uh, something new was able to grow and blossom out of it. And for me, that was my book. <laughs> Yeah, that is absolutely beautiful. I lo I love that analogy. I th I think that is so so beautiful and ama and amazing. So so thank you for sh for, for sharing that. That that was that is absolutely lovely. So so where do you go now from this? Yeah. Um. Well, I was able to create a summit which launched helped launch my book, which allowed more people to be connected to me and to my my story and to to be able to be connected to other avenues of, of how they can move forward through other people also because i really feel like collaboration is super key for me um and and moving love through the world i really want to move that's my biggest thing is not just to talk about grief or write a book is is just to move love through the world because we need so much love right now because there is so much struggle and loss and sadness and confusion and when I'm in a space of love, I don't feel those things. I, I feel the beauty, the joy, the expansion and life. It's, it's, a, it's an alive feeling. And that's what I want to share with other people, that we all have that possibility. And um, if I can be a part of bringing more love into the world in any way, shape or form, that's what I would like to do. Oh, that's beautiful. A brilliant mission to be on. <laughs> a brilliant purpose to to be on and i bet john's going to be behind you 100 percent on that one pushing you forward yes yes for sure <laughs> to new things yeah no that that is, that is that is brilliant so i really look forward to seeing what's what's going to come out of this i mean are you planning on doing more summits or anything or anything um, like that I don't know. I'm going to kind of see where life leads me. I Right now, I'll be doing a book club with my book um, starting in June, June 11th. We'll do it for nine weeks um, to have other people have a chance to, to be in a group setting on Zoom and 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 to connect at what, through whatever losses they've been. And, and, and my book has questions in, in it and affirmations and, and spaces for journaling and answering those questions. So we, we can share that and go forward from there. I've been meeting with a few people online and sharing our stories and i'm just going to be open to whatever wherever the universe leads me next <laughs> oh I, th I think it's going to be leading you to some amazing um places um you, you can you can just feel you know you just see the energy around you and feeling feeling it coming off you that this is definitely going to be leading you who knows where um so so uh, yeah I, I think in a year's time we're going to have to have you back on the show because i <laughs> think things are going to be have blossomed so much um with then you'll have so much more to uh to 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 share to share with with everyone so watch this space um uh, everyone because i can see this garam uh going way 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 further so as you know i do angelical cards and guided meditation so each week i like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves or those watching so susan would you like me to pull an oracle card or would you like me to do a mini guided meditation i just love your meditation so if you wouldn't mind doing a guided meditation i would love it <laughs> Excellent. I'll do that. But also, I'll do the guided meditation from the card because I like doing okay. that one as well. Yeah, that is fun too. Yeah. So, what do we all need to know for our highest good at this moment in time? Susan, everyone needs to know. Let's get some ones up. Let's see. Beautiful. Okay. So, close your eyes. Okay. And as you do so, take a deep breath in and on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be here. And allow your breathing to fall into its natural rhythm. Every in breath relaxing you more and more and every out breath just releasing what doesn't need to be here. And as your natural breathing rhythm falls into pattern, just think about relaxing your whole body. Think about relaxing your whole body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, 
all the way down your arms to your fingertips. When you think about relaxing, so you will relax. Give yourself permission and allow yourself to relax. And as you're just letting your body relax, take your awareness to the top of your head. And as you do, just see, fully imagine or know the whole of your head starting to relax. And as it does, just let that relaxation move down into your brow. Down into your temples. Down into your eyes. Down into your nose and your cheeks. Your mouth and your jaw. As that relaxation moves down into your neck and you feel all your neck muscles start to relax. As this relaxation moves down into your shoulders, your shoulders feel like they're being bathed in beautiful warm sunshine. So relaxing and it just feels like the weight is lifting off your shoulders. They are so relaxed. As this relaxation moves down your arms, all the way to your hands and your fingertips. As this relaxation moves into your upper body, and you feel your chest muscles start to relax. All your stomach muscles relax. All the muscles in your back relaxing. And your spine relaxing vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae. As this relaxation moves down into your hips your pelvis and your buttocks, sinking you deeper down where you are sitting. As this relaxation moves all the way down your legs to your feet and your toes. And you are just so relaxed now. And as you relax, just use your imagination. And imagine a staircase with five steps leading down to a beautiful door. And in a moment, you're going to walk down those steps from five to one. Each descending number relaxing you more and more. So let's start walking down these stairs now. Five, going deeper down these stairs. Four. Deeper down the stairs, three, more and more relaxed. Deeper down the stairs, two, all the way down the stairs, one, and you stand in front of this door. So now I want you to open this door. And as you do, you step outside into a beautiful park. It's a beautiful park that has trees and grass and flowers and a beautiful path going through this park. And you notice that on your back you have this rucksack, but it just feels so heavy. But you start walking through this park each step, relaxing you more, but this weight just feels as if it's stopping you traveling forward as lightly as you want, as though your life is full of burdens and you just want to simplify it. But how do you do that? And as you're walking along, you notice that in this park, 
There is a huge bin. And the bin is empty. And you get this idea that maybe it's time to start releasing some of those things that I'm carrying that are in my life that I don't need anymore. Whether they're emotional or physical, real imaginary, here, past, present, future. Know your life can be so much more simplified. So you take this backpack off and you start releasing stuff from it. You start taking stuff out and putting it into this bin. All those emotions, those thoughts, those feelings, those objects, anything that's holding you back. And I'll just give you a moment or two just to put them into this bin and know that they're going to be recycled, transmuted into beautiful new energy. So one by one, just put them into this bin. Don't think too hard about it or question should I or shouldn't I. Just allow it to go in there. Just trust that anything that is holding you back, that you need to release to simplify your life, is going into that bin. And as you start putting the last things into this spin, you feel a beautiful energy, a lightness. And it just feels so wonderful to know that you've simplified your life. And as you look in that rucksack, you see that the important things are still there. The important things that bring you joy, happiness, peace, love, understanding that can help you move through life. You haven't lost those, they are still there for you. So you pick that rucksack back up and you put it on your back and it just feels so light. And you start walking through the park. And you can hear birds singing and feel the beautiful sunshine coming down on your skin. It's so magical and wonderful, feeling so light. You know that you are now going to be traveling lightly through life. Your life is now so much simplified. And with a simplified life, you can bring so much joy and happiness into it. And you notice that there are other people on this path as well. Some you can see are traveling lightly. Others just that little bit more weighted down. And you can direct them to that bin. Know that you're doing your part on this.
And as you move through this park, connecting with these people, you feel so alive and you can feel their energy building as well. And it's like that ripple effect is going out into the whole human consciousness, out into the world, the universe. And before you know it, you've walked all the way through the park and you've ended up back at your door. So now step through your door and find yourself at the bottom of the steps. And in a moment, I'm going to count you up the steps from one to five. Each ascending number bringing you back to the present, to the here and now, knowing that your life is going to be so much simpler now. You're going to be traveling so much more lightly through life. So let's start walking up the stairs now. One, coming further up the stairs, two. Further up the stairs, three, remembering your whole journey. Further up the stairs, four, bringing back that beautiful energy. All the way to the top of the stairs, five, fully back, fully present. Move your body, wiggle your fingers and toes, open your eyes. Ground, make sure you are fully back. Drink some water if you've got some water by you. And welcome back. Wow. <laughs> How was that? That was so beautiful. It was so freeing. I, I could feel the weight coming off and having that permission to let go of it. And I could I could hear like the, the bin was metal, like my it was making like ding, ding sounds as <laughs> I was throwing it in. But then knowing it had another purpose and it can, it can be transmuted. How beautiful, too. And then to be able to direct other people to the bin because we can only all unload it ourselves. How beautiful. And uh, it, it was it was it was beautiful where and um, when it you know it was like coming as as you know you know all my guided meditations are channeled from the angels from the universe so I never know where where they're actually going to go um, with that so you know for those who've been watching please do let us if you're happy to share please do let us know in the comments you know how your journey was for you so anyway the card that came out was surprisingly traveling lightly simplify your life. Oh, wow. Which, which also beautifully ties into what you've been talking about um, to, today. So I just love the way all those synchronicities, again, just come in, in, in into play. So it's absolutely beautiful. So thank you for bringing your message to us today that we're able to go and do, um, you know, this journey, but also to understand that, that, that by taking on our dreams, and by taking those steps, we can actually move forward with a heart full of love. Yes, for sure. <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing in the world to move forward with love. Yeah, it is. So, Susan, um, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Any last words of wisdom? I would just like to say... Just realize how valuable you are and how special you are and all uh, everything that you have is all with inside of you. You don't need anyone else to complete that. You can love yourself fully. And then out of there, everything kind of just pours forth. So love yourself, value yourself, know how much self-worth you have and know how beautiful you are. Wonderful, beautiful words of wisdom. Thank you so, so much. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have. So if people want to connect with you, Susan, how do they do that and how do they get hold of your book? Yes, um, probably the easiest way is my website is www.susan, S-U-S-A-N dash Peters, P-E-T-E-R-S dot com. You can order the book directly from my web website or you can go on Amazon. It is called The Miracle of Marrying My Heart, A Journey to New Dreams After Loss. So you can also order it from any local booksellers. 
Um, but that is the easiest way through my website, probably. And I'm also on Instagram and Facebook under Susan Peters. And I have a, a Facebook page called Heart to Soul Links. So H-E-A-R-T-T-O-L-I-N-K-S. <laughs> and what I will do is I will put those or, um uh, links in the comments so that people can just literally click on them and go straight to them without having to type every, every everything awesome. in. that's great so thank you so much susan for sharing your wisdom it's been absolutely amazing and thank you to everyone who's been watching this show and of course if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multi-dimensional path but maybe you feel lost confused stuck or alone then please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 minute video call to find out where you are now, where you want to go and how to get there. And so you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar and know what your purpose in this lifetime is. And of course, come out of that spiritual closet. And of course, you can receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny by seeing into your future to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts by signing up to my email list. And again, thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live or I post new guides to meditations because every time you like, share, comment, subscribe on any social media, whether that's mine, Susan's, or anyone, any of my other guests, or anyone who's trying to get that message out there to help bring love, unity, and joy and peace into the world, then that really helps um, get the message out there and helps the algorithms so that you know we're not dictated to only be getting adverts and things that don't you know, don't really help us grow um, with, with that. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye. Thank you.